So I wanted to relax a little bit this weekend, maybe even get a haircut. Not like I need one or anything with my uh, newfound tool here, the ESD data vac blower. And I was getting inundated with requests to take a look at this X79 one and motherboard off AliExpress. You guys are spamming me on Twitter, Facebook, messages in the comment sections on my videos. So I knew I had to get this video out straight away. It got pushed to the top of the queue. Now you can get this board for around about $110 off AliExpress standalone, and it'll support X79 Xeons. And that's the good thing about these Xeons, especially with the E5 1650, is that it supports DDR3 registered. That's the difference between this and the 3930K. Similar CPUs, similar performance, exactly the same performance at the same clocks, but you do get that support for that DDR3 registered. Now, DDR3 registered memory is very cheap, especially compared to your normal DDR3 and your overpriced DDR4 memory. That's what's starting to make this kit look appealing, as well as the fact that you can get it from a whole kit, which is what I did for around about $330. You can get the E5 1650, 16 gigabytes of memory, and this motherboard shipped to your door. And the good thing about it is the AliExpress sellers will even mark it down for you without you asking. So if you've got very strict custom laws, then you'll be getting this thing in without paying too much import taxes, though your mileage may vary, so be careful on that. Though what we've got here is if you want to, too, I'll mention quickly, you can go out and pick up the individual parts for probably cheaper. I managed to pull up some eBay listings. CPU is around about 100 bucks. Motherboard's 110, you could get some memory for 60 bucks. So you could save yourself around about 60 US dollars if you bought the parts individually. Of course, if you live in places like the US, Australia, for example, you can go out and buy a Ryzen 5 1600, comes with a cooler. This doesn't come with a cooler, by the way. You can get 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, 170 bucks, and a B350 motherboard for $90. That brings that total to $450. That's brand new, that comes with warranty. This generally doesn't come with warranty. It'll only come with what the AliExpress guarantees are, which I think is like three months. But anyway, with all that aside, let's take a look at the overclocking, the ins and outs, the flaws, and the good things about this AliExpress motherboard. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with that video on the Wanam motherboards. Now, this is the only X79 Wanam motherboard I've had come through here. I haven't had an X58 motherboard come through. This is the only one I've had to come through, but I'm guessing the formula is going to be similar all across the board. The first thing I noticed is that they're using a H77 chipset on this motherboard. Somehow they managed to get quad channel memory working, which is a good thing because quad channel memory is gonna make this uh, platform more relevant, especially compared to dual channel. Uh, it makes the speeds and the bandwidth similar to that of, for instance, dual channel DDR4, 3200 megahertz at 1600 megahertz quad channel DDR3. That's one of the benefits of it. But how they push that through a H77 chipset, I got no idea. And the reason they go with that H77 chipset is twofold. First of all, the license is a lot cheaper than an X79 chipset license. The second thing is the H77 chipset license, of course, is not overclockable. And that's running a benefit for the people making these motherboards because they aren't putting the best VRM on them. That means that they can get away with saving money on the license and also capping the overclocks. And that's one thing about this board, it will cap the 1650 to 3.9 gigahertz. That's what I found. I went into the BIOS, it reminded me of a server BIOS. You did have the options there to change some settings on the memory. You could force that up to 1866, but again, that depends on the kit of memory you get. I managed to get my memory to 1600 megahertz across four sticks. This is on registered memory, which is pretty good. The performance was really good in games, and I will say this straight away. If you're looking for a gaming machine on a budget or you live in a remote area and things are overpriced where you are, this will serve you well for a decent gaming build. Performance in Overwatch was very smooth. Performance in Vulcan uh, Wolfenstein 2 was very smooth as well. I did notice the clock speeds in Wolfenstein were going down depending on the CPU load and same with Overwatch 2. But let's get on with the biggest point that I'm gonna stress if you wanna buy this thing and that is the VRM temperatures they were incredibly hot, and this is at stock settings too. If you're getting this thing, please do me a favor and put a fan on that VRM heatsink. Uh, when I didn't have a fan on it, even at the stock settings out of the box, I was getting over 100 degrees from the readings. When I uh, put the overclocks on and put a fan on it, now I know it's a little bit of a weird situation I had, but it's just a quick fix, put a 20 centimeter fan on it, 
and the temperatures dropped around 40 degrees on the heat sink, I think, and 20 degrees on the VRM. And this was overclocked. Stock settings was even a little bit better. So I was now able to get my CPU to 3.9 gigahertz, but I also did it with keeping the VRM a lot cooler. So if you want to keep this thing for a couple of years, which I'm guessing you will want to keep it for a couple of years, if you're buying a combo like this, then please do get a 12, even a 12 centimeter fan, just silicon it over that heat sink, get something worked out, because you will want some VRM cooling on this motherboard. Anyway, onto another question. What about the Russian custom biases going around? Putting them on one of these, will you be able to extract more overclocks, 4.2 gigahertz, for example? And the answer in my case was I couldn't get it to work no matter what I did. Uh, I downloaded the Russian BIOS for it, uh, tried flashing it with Aphidos, it would just freeze every time. I tried different versions of Aphidos, just froze every time, so I couldn't get a custom BIOS on this thing. And I'm guessing that's why they've made this reiteration of this motherboard, because they don't want people overclocking these motherboards. They're just simply, in my opinion, not really capable of high overclocks. And if they do get these motherboards in, if people do get these motherboards in and overclock them, and they break them, and it's still under the AliExpress warranty, the seller generally will have to bear the brunt. So I'm guessing that was the big request to lock these biases out. Now you may be able to get it out with a custom bias flashing tool manually and uh, flash it, but that's a lot of work. And I'm guessing the average guy out there who just wants to get one of these kits is not gonna be able to do it. I do have this custom tool, I just haven't, <laughs> haven't spent much time with it at the moment to learn how to work it. And, but anyway, there it is, VRM. Make sure you get a fan over the heatsink. Also with your CPU, you are limited to a 3.9 gigahertz overclock on the E5 1650. And I believe this will scale, even though I've only got only one Wana motherboard here, I believe this is gonna be the trend throughout all the Wana motherboards. They're not the best motherboards. They are with, uh, made with budget in mind, and also the sellers do wanna make a profit, and that's understandable. So you're gonna generally see a trend uh, across X58 boards as well, where you're gonna be limited in your overclocking with these motherboards. I would guess that the best combos would probably be those fixed Xeons with no overclocking. They are really good value and they will couple well with these motherboards. But any one and motherboard, after seeing what I saw here with the VRM, I'd be putting a fan on it regardless of the model. So now for the temperature test, I did do over half an hour, even up to an hour on most of my stress tests, changing things around. And the max uh, pull I could get was 125 watts. Now in the BIOS, it is rated up to 130 watts. And on this particular BIOS, I can't change that no matter what. So they've definitely custom uh, set this BIOS to limit those overclocks, not only on the multiplier itself, but also on the power uh, distribution. So if you do get unlucky and you do get a bad Z on an E5 uh, 1650, you may not even be able to get to 3.9 gigahertz. I'm just not sure because the voltage does go up to 1.28 volts on the core and you can't change that no matter what you do. So your overclocking options are limited, but at 3.9 gigahertz with a fan on the heatsink, it does run really well. So for the Cinebench scores, you're getting around about 990 points. That's the most I can get. Uh, with the overclock to 3.9 gigahertz. Out of the box, it'll be around 880. So it is decent performance and it will play today's games very well. The Sandy Bridges are still very relevant in 2018, especially if you're coupling it with mid-range graphics cards. In this case, I had a 780 Ti, which is a very good used graphics card. If you want to couple it with something like this, you'll have an excellent combo for gaming. Also, other things with this motherboard, you get two SATA cables included, the faceplate, and I will say that these are some of the shortest SATA cables I've seen in my life. Uh, also, if you are tuning this thing, make sure you turn off USB selective suspend in the power options. I notice when it turns off the USB ports and then you go to turn them back on again, you get this very weird stuttering problem. It's something that's really annoying. Also, when I was transferring files, I don't know if it was that USB selective setting, I believe it was. Uh, but the files were coming to a pause as well. So really turn that setting off. May even want to turn off the PCIe uh, power link setting as well. Uh, just make sure that's off to get smooth performance. Though one cool thing for those guys who love retro and retro noises, when you boot this thing up, it makes this real 1980s uh, computer sound. So it's, I, I like it. I personally think it's a cool thing. I'll let you guys take a quick listen.
but it could be a double-edged sword. And the reason I say is, is in the past I have, you know, had a girl who, um, you know, it's just they hate you playing video games. And so, you know, you wake up at midnight, do a little sneak, jump on the computer, you know, headphones on everything, try to be a ninja. But if you've got this noise there, this bleep, 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 she's gonna hear that and she's gonna wake up and go off at you. So that is the double-edged sword with this motherboard and that noise. Um, I'm not even sure if you can turn it off in the BIOS. I haven't really checked that because uh, I actually like it in my current situation. So Though before I get on out of here, quick recap with the X79 Wana motherboard and the kit that I got at least, 16 gigabytes quad channel pumped memory, E5-1650, goes up to 3.9 gigahertz. Motherboard that does support both of these, though you will want to put a fan on that heatsink. I'm going to keep stressing that. There are some positives, there are some negatives to it. You will need to get your own CPU cooler as well. So make sure you do that when you get this. I do recommend the VTG5 if you're in a remote area. Great value for money. Of course, this being good value for money if you're in a remote area. You may want to consider going out and buying new if you're in a country like the US, Oz, or UK. Just weigh up your options. Though it is a solid option for what it is if you're getting into PC gaming. Does have NVMe support as well. Does have a USB front out header. And the sellers, they will mark it down for you and they do pre-test it as well to make sure everything's working. So there are the benefits, the negatives as well. I pointed them out through all that, the video. So there it all is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, then be sure to slap that like button. If you have any requests, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And you probably noticed all these graphics cards on the table here. I will be making that used graphics card guide for 2018 in this current cryptocurrency apocalypse. A pop, a lick, pop, blah, blah. Anyway, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Um, obviously, you're getting a Cinebench score of around about a thousand point. Getting a Cinebench score of up uh, around a, You're getting a Cinebench score of around about a thousand points. You're getting a Cinebench score that goes up to around about a thousand points. So you are getting a little bit of extra mileage there. So it's the start of my weekend and I wanted to relax a little bit and maybe even get a haircut. Not that, not that I need one.